What is up, my exchange family from all over the world, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my wonderful co-host, Julie Mitchell. How you doing, Julie? Great to see you this morning, Chief. I'm doing well. How about you? It is great to see you, and we, we're we on Chief Chat number two this week. We normally have one, one a week, and we, we're on number two, and then we're going to have a third one today as well, so... You know, we got some special guests, some awesome guests, and we're going to have three in one week. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, and so today we have a legendary entertainer in our midst. We're super excited to talk with her. Uh, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Today's guest is an Emmy and Tony award-winning actress known for her role as Glenda the Good Witch in the Broadway smash hit Wicked and for her roles in film and television, including Pushing Daisies, The West Wing, and Glee. Her next role is in the musical comedy miniseries Schmigadoon, which premieres on Apple TV on July 16th. That is tomorrow, y'all. Please give a warm chief chat welcome to Christian Chenoweth. Hey. Hi, y'all. Hey, thanks for being here. And for everybody who's watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. And if you have questions for Kristen, leave them in the comments too. We will read them live. As Chief said, we have Chief Chats every week, sometimes more than once a day. So follow our page, enable your notifications, and you will not miss a moment. Absolutely. So Kristen, thank you so much for being with us on Chief Chat. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here. You have no idea. Uh, awesome, awesome. Can you tell us and our viewers where you're calling us from? Yes, I'm sitting in my New York City apartment. I just got back from the Today Show. And you know what, Chief, you, you'll understand. New York is not quite back with the hustle and bustle yet, but you're starting to see more traffic, which I think is a good sign. <laughs> oh, man, man. And, and I'm, I'm super stoked that we're we're on the on the tail end of the Today Show. Like, man, yes. we, we must be mad. <laughs> Listen, Julie, we're taking this to the next level. Leveling up. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen, you have built your career around live performances. How has the last, you know, 18 months been for you professionally and personally during the pandemic? Um, you know, it's been hard for everyone. I think for live entertainers, it's been incredibly difficult because uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a workhorse and I like to... <laughs> I don't want to be left alone too long with my thoughts. And I'm also, I'm an artist, you know, I love to get it out that way. And so I had to figure out other ways to do that. And, um, and I did, I, I, I have a great boyfriend. I have a great, you know, family life and lots of friends that we had our little pod, but, um, it was hard. I had my first show back last Saturday night in Salt Lake, in, uh, Salt Lake City and Park City, Utah, excuse me, with the with the symphony there, and there were tears. There were 4,000 oh. people there, and I cried just because, you know, it was the audience, I don't know, music. Yeah, it, it's, it's nothing like having a live audience, you know, when you, especially because I, I know we talked to a couple of other uh, musicians, and uh, they were doing, trying to do it through Zoom, and they just said it just wasn't the same trying to sing and perform through Zoom, and you, you don't get feedback, you just have to clap at yourself. You, you gotta assume people people are, are, are happy happy for you. So it's I can only imagine. It's so hard because especially live, we listen to the audience. The audience is the other character. And if if, if I'm in a concert as myself, or if I'm in a, a play or a musical as myself, we still listen. So not to have the with it. So it's just I don't know. It was a really hard year. I I had a lot of loss, like we all did, I'm sure. Um, but. I also had some beautiful moments too. Um, and I think this time of just being stopped and listening instead of talking so much like what I'm doing right now, <laughs> it's been so important. It really has been so important. Absolutely. So so you have a new series premiering on July 16th on Apple TV Plus called Schmigadoon. Am I saying that right? You did, you got it, you nailed it. <laughs> Listen, I, my, my Louisiana vernacular doesn't, we, we don't do anything over two syllables. So that, that was pretty tough for me. So my boyfriend's going like this because he's on the Arkansas Louisiana border. He grew up. That's what I'm talking about. Te uh, what is that? Arklatex. Arklatex. Arklatex, baby. That's him. That's him. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm from Shreveport, so I, I'm I'm pretty sure we're, we're probably close to each other. Uh, yeah, he's from El Dorado, Arkansas. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, absolutely. Small world, right? This big. Yeah, I know. So tell us about the show and your role in it. 
Uh, well, it stars Cecily Strong and Keegan Michael Key, and they are a couple that are needing to work on their relationship after a few years. So they decide to go on a trip, a camping trip, and they get lost. The long story short, they wind up trapped in a musical, and that's where my character lives. I play Mildred Layton. She is uptight. She is the town biddy, and she does not want change, and she does not want outs outsiders or strangers coming in. And she has a lot to say about it. And um, it was a very fun part. It The, the show is an, a love letter to Broadway in and of itself. It's silly. It's ridiculously, ridiculously funny in all the right ways. And all the musical numbers are nods to songs for musical. For example, my character sings a long, long, long patter song in episode five. It was 18 pages. And it's an ode to, you've got trouble, my friends, right here in River City for Music Man. But this is called Tribulation. And yeah, Mildred has a lot to say about, about this unique couple coming into her town. It's, just, it's silliness, but at the, I think at a time when we could really use it. I cannot wait to watch this. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I think you're going to crack up. My brother is not necessarily a musical theater lover or an opera lover and he would say don't invite me to those anymore Kristen but um so there's 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 that's Keegan's character Keegan Michael Key's character so when when you see somebody like you know my brother or or someone like um my neighbor watching it and cracking up you think okay we, we have something here and the, the clips on YouTube are hilarious. I watched one earlier today for corn pudding. I was dying. I'm like, I need to watch this show. I can't wait. It's going to be great. Thank you so much. Well, you know, in musical theater, when we can't say it anymore, we sing it. And if that means it's about corn pudding, then we do what we got to do. <laughs> so what was it like filming the show during the pandemic? And what do you think audiences are going to like best about the new series? During the pandemic, and I'm sure you both can understand, you know, to, to, to not be able to touch or do the things that we're so, so used to doing, especially us musical theater people, where we just, you know, we're just constantly hugging and loving on each other. It was at the height of the pandemic. It was pre-vaccine. Pre uh, we shot it in Canada, but this is how safe we wore. We wore cones. Like I, th I said, we felt spayed and neutered. Like not scratching for fleas and stuff. Yeah, it, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, we wore masks and then when it, we were COVID tested every other day. And then that's how we kept our set safe. We had very small groups like between takes and then we take we would take the cones and the masks off and do then our thing and then back uh, sanitize and recone up. It became like a little bit of a you know, like it's winter time, put on your coat. We, we just got used to it. But I'm so grateful for it because we all needed it at that time to be together. And I think people will take away from this show nothing but fun. And we, you know, I've been, I don't know about you guys, but I've been downloading and watching everything on Netflix and Hulu and yeah. Apple TV, especially, which this show happens to be on. But this is just silly. This is silliness at its best with some of the best actors um, that you all know and love from Broadway and television. So it's kind of like best po possible case scenario. Awesome, man. We can't wait to watch it, to check it out. Uh, and we know it's only July, but it's never too uh, early to think about the holidays. And we heard through the, the grapevine that you got an album coming out. Can you give us a little exclusive uh, on Chief Chat? Absolutely, Chief. I'm going to give you a, you, a, you and Julie a really good one. So I went to Nashville and I, in the pandemic, it was like last, I want to say May, just May, just a few months ago. And it was the first album they had done back where everybody was, like the singer was there and everybody was there. So we did the COVID test. I, I was like, I'm so ready for Christmas because in some ways it feels like we missed Christmas this year, yes. yeah. even though we didn't, but you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, wait. absolutely. Yeah, so um, I wanted to do a duet. I wanted to do a, a blues number, which isn't what I'm known for, but I really wanted an artist that I looked up to from a long time, from, from I can as long as I can remember. And I thought I'll never get him, but I did get him. 
and it's Keb Mo. He's on the record, and we're doing a really cool blues song. I know, that's, that is a exclusive. Um, but I'm really proud of it. I just did music that not just, I, I am a person of faith, so I, I actually believe in what the, the true meaning of Christmas is, but I did all kinds of stuff on there. And I think maybe that's what the pam- pandemic did for me artistically, is ca- just kind of went, there are no more rules. Just, just saying, and that's what I did. I can't wait for people to hear it. Man, man, so the fact that we got an exclusive, I gotta make the noise, right, Julie? Yeah, do it, Chief. <laughs> hey, that's as good as jazz hands. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's my version of jazz hands. I like it. I like it. I like it. Good job, Chief. And Kristen, you just wrapped up your Broadway boot camp, and I'm loving your camo jacket, by the way. I love that. That is fabulous. Yeah, I'm, that representing, is- I'm representing. I love it. Love it. I, have, I have a lot of people in my family that are military. And I, I always like, you know, I know what this means, actually. I'm wearing it in a fashionable sense, but I actually know what it means and understand it. So I thought today, put on your jacket, girl. It looks fantastic on you. And I love to what it, that it represents your love for the military. Oh, hey, I'm wearing my, Kristen, I'm wearing mine too. <laughs> hey, it looks good, baby. You're rocking your camo. <laughs> okay. so tell us about Broadway Boot Camp. I know it was a little bit different this year, but it's an annual tradition for you. And how did you adjust it and make it safe for the kids? First of all, thank you for asking about it. It's our eighth year. It's called Christian Chenoweth Broadway Boot Camp. It's in my home state of Oklahoma. We've never, we didn't have anything like this when I was growing up, which is why I wanted to do it. Um, we have auditions every year. Last year, I didn't get, I didn't do camp at all. So I was thinking about how can I do it this year because I'm not skipping another year with without the kids. They're missing everything. I'm not going to do it. But I, not hate, I dislike technology and Zoom so much. How am I going to make this happen? So I, I hired a, a really great tech team to come to Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, where my theater is. And we had auditions in March. We picked 134 kids from eight countries and 33 states. Normally, it's just Oklahoma. But I thought, if we're going to do it this year, let's go global. And yeah. boy, did we ever. We, we had 134 kids. I'm telling y'all, signing up for singing, acting, dancing, songwriting classes. I mean, they, they auditioned to get in. And I think what the virtual thing did for us this year was had a far, re- far, farther reach, a farther reach than I ever knew would become possible. And then two of our kids got signed from professional children, you know, child, really big child agencies. And I'm like, no, that's not what I wanted to do. I just want them to learn. But whatever it t- you know, whatever it takes to get these kids to a stay with it. B, I have all my famous fancy friends coming in to teach, way bigger stars than me, and C, not miss out anymore. And now next year, I have a conundrum because I had girls, I had kids from the Philippines, the UK, Australia, Brazil. I've got to keep that going. Yeah. And so I'm going to do a hybrid next summer where we have in person and the cameras there too. So please be praying for me. Please wish me luck because this year was a huge success that I never saw coming. Fantastic. Good for you. No, you got to embrace that IT now. Embrace that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I hired the people that do Manhattan Transfer, they do all their tech. And I was like, listen, I know we're not Manhattan Transfer, we're Broadway Boot Camp, but. Come on, and it's, and it's boot camp for a reason because it's a lot of work for these kids. They go from we ha, we go from nine until six, and then they also had chat rooms that that were safely monitored, but where they could get to know each other. I'm telling you, you guys, it was one of the best parts about about learning through learning something I I didn't ever think was possible. Yeah, I just think that's a noble cause from you to kind of give back to your community uh, where you came from because I know up in the south. We don't really think about Broadway and, and opera and, you know, we, we got our country music and we got our different type of genres that we do here, but uh, opera and Broadway, we're just so far away from New York City that where that's prevalent. So for you to bring kind of New York City to Oklahoma is awesome. Thank you, Chief. That means a lot to me. I, 
you know, I grew up in Oklahoma, so I, I know the country music. I loved, I love it. And, and I have kids that will do that. But just for them to have the opportunity to learn. We had a vision impaired young lady who her dad set up a ballet bar and she learned to tap dance. Yeah, that's awesome. And I thought, never will I ever have another excuse, Kristen, not to get my butt up and go work out, rehearse, do the things that you love to do. And this kid was amazing. I was inspired the whole week, y'all. I mean, for real. So thank you for saying that. And I'm going to keep it going for as long as I'm on this planet. I'm going to keep it going. So we hear you're working on a film as well. So can you share? I heard it's like a sports drama or something called yeah. National Yes, yeah, thank you. Me? Yeah, thank you for asking. Um, it stars. Um, okay, it's called. It, it's called National Champions. It is a football movie, but it's really about um, when you sign as a college football player and you get injured, and how does that help? How does that look for your future? These kids want to be paid, yeah. so it's around that subject. Okay. And. I play a trophy wife of the head coach, which is created by the incredible actor um, that won the Academy Award for Whiplash, if you know that movie about um, the, the I call him the drummer, he's a sergeant, but just an incredible movie. One that I didn't see coming again, we shot at New Orleans very safely, but the subject matter is what I found interesting because as, as an, I look at myself as an athlete too, and when I was at OCU, Oklahoma City University, as a young, you know, student, I got injured. But I had to keep that quiet, right? Because when you go in the professional world, you don't want anyone to know you're injured. You don't want, and it's like it's about that. And we just had an incredible cast, and it's a subject that I think is worth discussing. And the movie sort of turns that subject on its ear, and I'll be anxious to see what um, y'all think of it because there's it's a very um, it's a mixed bag what people think well you're getting a scholarship yes that's true I got a scholarship and I got to go to college and learn and when when at a time when my family couldn't afford it but also I was putting myself at risk with injury harm you know what I mean I mean, it's just an yeah. interesting conversation it's great well, I'm this, eager to see like, this is this year was like the first year I guess like, all the students can get paid now or they, they just started this uh this this coming year or something like that so i heard the ncaa change some rules and, and allowing uh allow, allowing players to get paid off their likeness and and yeah. all the different things yeah which is about time I, like i said it it's a it's a billion dollar corporation uh that makes you know a lot of money so, yeah but but we yeah we, we don't want to you get it you get it you totally yeah. get it and i was really you know, the, the $100 handshakes just can only take you so far, you yeah, know? absolutely. Definitely looking forward to that coming out. Um, that'll be, is that is that going to be in the spring or in the winter? Or when? It actually comes out, out around Thanksgiving. So oh, this fall. Oh, yeah. this year. Yes, get back to the movies. Yes, Cannot right. wait for that too. Thank you. Ma'am, you've had such long success in such a tough industry. What advice do you have for young people who are interested in pursuing a career in their performing arts? I think it would go with anything that they choose, but it, most especially this industry. This industry is, um, it's fickle. There's lots of ups and downs, just like a lot of jobs, right? But it's, it can be very self-involved because think about what I'm doing now. I'm talking to you guys about all my stuff going on, which I'm proud of, but it can be very self. So what I'd say is find other things that you love to do as well. It's really important to have those, you know, it, it gets funny here. I love to bedazzle things. My poor boyfriend, I put on my really thick glasses and I bedazzle all my sports hats, my o, o, my OKC Thunder stuff, uh, my OU stuff. I like to bedazzle, I like to color. I know it sounds weird, but I've got these really good pencils, a great pencil sharpener and I, I color at night just to bring, if you have anxiety or thinking about the world or jobs or whatever, they have something else that you, that, that can be sort of like white noise for you. I don't know, That that's, I think, a good piece of advice that I've learned too. Okay, awesome. You dropping nuggets on us, Chris, and I appreciate that. Of so, course. So, you know, this, this platform is super unique because we give you the opportunity to, to have a very captive military audience. So we have soldiers, airmen, 
Airmen, Guardian, Sailors, Marines, and Coast Guard members joining us from around the world. Uh, what words of hope or encouragement can you share with our nation's heroes? Just what I really want to say is besides thank you, is that you are so appreciated that sometimes, you know, whenever I see someone in uniform in the airport, again, because I have military in my family, I actually know that the families are sacrificing too. And I see that. And I think our world is really seeing that. And so for those of you who feel unseen or especially families, I'm talking to the families, you are so seen and appreciated and we know the sacrifice and you are beloved and loved. That's really what I want to impart. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, uh, so I got to admit, so before... Before the interview, I try to do my, you know, my stalking, right? My, my social media stalking and, yes. and my, my internet stalking. And so I went to your Wikipedia and it's it's like a scroll. Like you you found literally everything. It's I'm talking about you got brackets on brackets of brackets of just different things that you've done in your career. So your iron, you got so many irons in the fire uh, and you played a, no, a number of iconic Broadway roles. So, uh, can you tell us which one's your favorite and why? Can you narrow it down to? Uh... Yeah. Oh, it's like asking me what my favorite child is, and yeah. I don't have any. Um, I think, I think for me, it's it's not what everyone would think. Of course, I loved being a part of, you know, Charlie Brown and Wicked and and all of the shows I've done. But there was a very hard, incredibly difficult role for a little-known operetta called On the Twentieth Century that we did, the last show I did on Broadway actually. And it's a very demanding, challenging role. And it was one that I knew I wanted to do. It was Lily Garland. It's operatic, but she's a, she dances and it's comedic. And I had Peter Gallagher as my co-star and an incredible chorus, but it is musical theater at its finest, first of all. And they hadn't revived it in 40 years because they said we need to have the right lady. So when, when um, the writers told me, this is the, a little known nugget, told me 20 years ago, Comden and Green, they said, you're the next Lily Garland in about 20 years, you're it. And you have to promise us you'll do it. And though they are no longer with us, I felt so happy on opening night, I thought, I'm doing it. And they said, nobody could do it. It's it, Madeline Kahn originated the role and she lasted a month. It's so demanding, but I did it. And I'm, you know how you look at something also as a challenge and when you overcome it, you think, I did that. That's why I'm so proud of that part. Oh, congratulations. That's such a great feeling and thank you. And thank you for sharing your, all of your, your talents with us too. That really, it means a lot to all of us. Um, especially, I mean, I don't have any musical talent at all and or theater talent. And I, I see people, you and, and your your colleagues, you guys are here to make us happy. And, and it's it's so great. And your talent just shines through. And thanks for sharing your, your favorite role with us. It's amazing. Thank you. And, and also just FYI, a, a PS, I really do mean what I say. And I really do. You know, you guys keep us safe. There was a reason that the USO was invented. We, we want to make people happy and forget about their problems because the weight of the world really is, you know, I get it. So that's, you know, a big part of, I used to watch the USO tours with Bob Hope and that's a, one of the big reasons I wanted to be an entertainer. And I thought, if I can do that, if I could just make one person laugh that's, you know, serving our country or cry in a good way or, you know, think I'm even the husbands that get drug along to see my concerts, you know, I just want to say thank you. <laughs> Kristen, I want to pause for a second and turn to our, our live feed and just share some of the viewer oh. comments with you. Chief, I'm going to stop on your page first. Um, Heidi says good morning and carolyn phillips says my little girls camille and claire love your performance in disney's descendants and i'm gonna flip over to our main page which and on our main page kristen we did share um a clip from your new show so that folks can get excited about it just as excited as we are um amy mitchell is watching and she says ah, i love her and Dale Killip says he's watching from Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Linda says hello from Fort Meade, Maryland. Um, Amy is watching from Houston. 
Sally Anna says, eek, I love you, Kristen. And Kristen's in big caps there. So she really means it. She really loves you. Um, and Victor says that he just loves you and you are so funny and so talented. Steven is watching from Oregon. And he says, as a blinded vet, I can't watch your work, but your talent overcomes that barrier. I listen to your works and have enjoyed everyone. I even went out and got my own chihuahua. Thanks, Steve Butler. <laughs> oh, thank you, darling. That just made my whole week. <laughs> so lots of great comments coming over for you. Um, everybody's yeah. really happy that that you're here with us. Oh, well, thanks, I everybody. Question. I got a quick question for you, Kristen. What's, what's your go-to karaoke song? Alone. Always got by on my own. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. See? I'm heart. heart. Yes. I love that. Oh, my gosh. That was amazing. That was so good. Oh, I have oh. chills. Oh, thank you. You sang. So, so for me, when, when I think of karaoke, I think of karaoke is meant for people that can't sing. <laughs> people that can sing, it's not even fair. It's like we might as well call it from karaoke to concert that's all it is it's a concert. i get nervous chief i get nervous when i see a karaoke machine because i'm like am i supposed to perform where's the spotlight do i get paid and is, is it free what do i do it's so weird i also i also do enjoy the rose by bet bet mittler because that's an always safe bet gotcha gotcha Man, that's safe for you maybe not for me you don't want me singing the rose by Bette mittler love that song you don't want me singing it though <laughs> Kristen, before we wrap up, can you remind us where we can go to follow you and find out more about what you're up to? And also, where can we find out more about Schmigadoon? Yes. So Apple TV, Schmigadoon, it's right there. Um, you can go to Apple TV or Schmigadoon. You can go to at Kate Chenoweth for that's my website and uh, all, thing, all things Instagram, social, Facebook, and see what I'm doing and where I'm playing. And I'll be coming making up a lot of concerts to a lot of the towns that you mentioned, Julie, of people watching. And I cannot wait because, you know, I am a New Yorker. I've lived here a long time, but I'm an Oklahoma girl. So I'm, I guess you call me a Southern Yankee. How's that? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad you kept your accent You're from Oklahoma because it, it, it's shining through right now. I appreciate yeah, it. It's coming out now. I said the word Oklahoma and here, here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Kristen, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I know you got a busy schedule. Uh, we appreciate you sharing your time with with us and our military viewers and veterans and family members from all over the world. Uh, if you don't mind, if you you stay on a little bit after the live, so I can get some information from you. But we wish you all the best. We're here to support Smigadoon and national champions and just everything that you're working on. Like like I said, you got so many irons in the fire, and we appreciate the the. Uh, like I said, the reprieval or the entertainment that you bring to uh, to to us, to, you know, have a good cry or a good laugh or just a, a, an amazing song to hear that uh, that that means so much to everybody in the world. So you, like I said, you you're doing a lot for the world, and we appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank okay, you. well, well, we're gonna wrap it up, and so Chief Chat out. Chief Chat out. Bye, y'all. Bye. We're off the live. I, oh no, so we're not. Funny. I didn't hit. <laughs>